Hi guys. I thought I'd read you guys a couple more stories today. Um, today it's going to be in the sacrifice category. Um, just like yesterday, I think it was. Wasn't it yesterday that I read you guys stories, or was it the day before? I can't really remember, but anyway, it's just like then. I haven't read these stories yet, so we'll be reading them for the first time together. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat's been sore. I got a blister on my tongue. My tongue hurts really bad. I haven't had a blister on the side of my tongue for two days. I don't know if I ate something hot or what, but it really, really hurts. I'm hoping Sherma will go to the dollar store and get me some Ambisol. I'm going to try to put some Ambisol on it. Hopefully, that'll help it because it's very painful. But anyway, the first story, see the, the page that I'm on with these stories? They are voted. People vote on them, thumbs up and thumbs down. And um, the first story that I picked was the one that was voted up the highest in the sacrifice category and it's called the bridge keeper and 97 97 people voted it up it was the highest rated one so I thought would see if this one was a good one because it was number one voted up out of 101 votes it got 97 so so we'll read this one and see how it is, and then we'll go find another one in the sacrifice category today. Okay? So this one is called The Bridge Keeper. There was once a bridge which spanned a large river. During most of the day, the bridge sat with its length running down and down the river, paralleled with the banks, allowing ships to pass through freely on both sides of the bridge. But at certain times each day, a train would come along and the bridge would be turned sideways across the river allowing the train to cross it. A switchman sat in a small shack on one side of the river where he operated the controls to turn the bridge and lock it into place as the train crossed. One evening as the switchman was watching for the last train of the day to come, he looked off into the distance through the dimming twilight and caught sight of the train lights. He stepped to the control and waited until the train was within a prescribed distance when he was to turn to the bridge. He turned to the bridge into the position, but to his horror he found the locking control did not work. If the bridge was not securely in position, it would wobble back and forth at the ends where the train came onto it, causing the train to jump the track and crashing into the river. This would be a passenger train with many people aboard. He left the bridge, turned across the river, and hurried across the bridge to the other side of the river, where there was a lever switch he could hold to operate the lock manually. He would have to hold the lever back firmly as the train crossed. He could hear the rumble of the train now, and he knew he had to take hold of the lever and lean back to apply his weight on it, locking the bridge. He kept applying the pressure to keep the mechanism locked. Many lives depended on this man's strength. Then coming across the bridge from the direction of his control shack, he heard a sound that made his blood curl cold. Daddy, where are you? His four-year-old son was crossing the bridge to look for him. His first impulse was to cry out to the child, Run, run! But the train was too close. The tiny legs would never make it across the bridge in time. The man almost left his lever to run and snatched up his son and carry him to safety, but he realized that he could not get back to the lever. Either the people on the train or his little son must die. He took a moment to make his decision. The train sped safe, safely and swiftly on its way, and no one aboard was even aware of the tiny broken body thrown mercilessly into the river by the onrushing train, nor were they aware of the pitiful figure of the sobbing man still clinging tightly to the locking lever long after the train had passed. They did not see him walking home more slowly than he had ever walked to tell his wife how their son had brutally died. 
Now if you comprehend the emotions which went in this man's heart, you can begin to understand the feelings of our Father in Heaven when He sacrificed His Son to bridge the gap between us and eternal life. Can there be any wonder what He caused the earth to tremble and the skies to darken when His Son died? How does He feel when He sped along through life without giving a thought of what was done to us through Jesus Christ? It was a really good story. It was really sad. I would have to give it a thumbs up, bring that up to 98 votes, because I thought that was a be beautiful story. The next one is only voted up to 47, and that's the next most popular one. So, we'll read it, but I don't know how good it'll be, guys, because, like I said, it's only voted up to 47, but it's the next most, it's the next most popular, and it's not letting me click on it for some reason. Here we go. I don't know. It was stuck for a minute. And this one's called Two Visitors. And it's got, well, it's got 42 votes out of 52. So. And it's by Beth Fisher. Two visitors came to see me, both at the same time. Both were trying to win control of my body, heart, and mind. One was dressed quite plainly. One dress fit to kill. I couldn't see the battle they were waging for my will. One promised to give fame, friends, and riches beyond compare. Anything I wanted, it seemed, and while I was standing there. He showed me how life could be, for a little while at least. I couldn't see beneath the clothes to recognize the beast. The other told of hard times, of sacrifice and pain. Ridicule and persecution, nothing much to gain. But there was something deep in the visitor's eyes that made me feel to choose him. Somehow would be wise. I guess you know the outcome. I hope my life reflects. The one I picked, the path I chose, the one that he directs. But now at least I see him as he truly is the king. So did I choose so poorly, I wonder as I sing. Eternal praises to my God, at last in heaven's city. Could I have been richer and more popular? What a pity. For now all I have to show for the pain and unkind laughter is a crystal mansion on a street of gold living happily ever after. <laughs> the devil didn't win that one, did he? That was a good one. I like that. I like that really well. I wonder why that wasn't voted up higher. I had to vote that one up again, too. That was really good, guys. I really enjoyed that one. How long is this video? Okay, this video is eight minutes. I might be able to do one more. Because I promised you guys I wouldn't make these longer. Ooh. It was going to let me click on it, and it froze up again. Hold on. It was the Christian prison, and I thought, ooh, this sounds interesting. If it, like, this page, like, freezes for, like, a minute, and it won't let you click on it. So, uh, hello. So while we're waiting, how have you guys been today? Are you guys getting any storms where you're at? It hasn't stormed here yet. Actually, the sun's shining again, guys. Oh, it's going to let me click on it now. A Christian prison. This one's a short story, so after this one I'll quit. 
because like I said, I promised you guys I wouldn't make these videos too long. And this story is by Max Lucado, and it's voted 25 from 25 votes. That's really good. A Christian prison. Near the city of San Jose is a remarkable facility. Twenty years ago, the Brazilian government turned a prison over to two Christians. The institution was renamed hum Humanitia. Uh, I don't know if I got that right, guys. And the plan was to run it on a Christian principles with the expectation of two full-time staff. That's not much staff. And the work is to be done by the inmates. Families outside the prison adopt an inmate to work with during and after this term. Chuck Colson visited the prison and made his report. When I visited the prison, I found the inmates smiling, particularly the murderer who held the keys, opened the gates, let me in. Whenever I walked, I saw men at peace. I saw clean living areas, people working industri industriously. The walls were decorated with biblical sayings and psalms and proverbs. My guide escorted me to the notorious prison cell, once used for torture. Today, he told me, that blockhouse is only a single inmate. As we reached the end of the long concrete corridor, and he put the key in the lock, he paused and asked, Are you sure you want to go in? Of course, I replied impatiently. I've been in isolation cells all over the world. Slowly he swung open the massive door, and I saw the prisoner in the punishment cell, a crucifix, beautifully carved by the inmates the prisoner Jesus hanging on a cross he's doing time for the rest of us my guide said softly by Max Lucado <laughs> I wonder if that would really work guys to really have a prison like that and to teach them all based on Christian you know teach them all from the Bible and to have a cross with Jesus in it on the cell and to tell them that, that Jesus is paying for their sins. and I wonder if that would really work. It would be really great if it would, wouldn't it? That would be terrific. If it would be terrific. But sadly, I don't think uh, that nobody's ever really going to do that. Just like there's so many stories about we've seen here lately about the schools a little kid got in trouble for trying to pray at lunchtime and another little kid got in trouble for uh, writing about Jesus on a t test paper for Jesus um, being the one that impacted her life the most so I don't think they're going to ever turn a prison into anything that involves anything with Jesus they want Jesus just to... They would be happy, I think, if Jesus was completely out of this world altogether. But I'm going to keep preaching the word of Jesus till the day I die. So if they don't like it coming from me, they'll have to kill me, kill me to stop me. Because I'm not going to stop voluntarily, I'll tell you that. I will preach God's word till the day I die. I don't care who says not to. So anyway, guys, enough of the, enough of that, enough of that. This video is getting long. It's after 14 minutes, and I promised you guys it wouldn't be long. So I'm gonna get off here, and I hope you guys have a good night. It's almost five o'clock. I love you guys. I will see you tomorrow with the Bible reading. Have a great night. I love you guys. Let's bring our souls to Jesus, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.